This is Daniel Dubois' next opponent, Japanese heavyweight Kyotaro Fujimoto. He's 33 years old. He fights out of Tokyo. He's got a record of 21 and 1 with 13 KOs. The one defeat was early on in his career to Australian heavyweight Solomon Hamano. And other than that, he doesn't have too many recognizable names on his record other than, interestingly enough, fellow Japanese fighter Nobiro Ishida. He fought him twice. The second time, back in 2015, he was taken to a very close 10-round split decision against Ishida. Now, the name Ishida is going to be ringing bells for some of you right now. Oh yes, this is the very same Ishida who is a career light middleweight, okay, super super welterweight. Here he was in 2015 fighting up at heavyweight against against uh, Daniel Dubois, excuse me, I was going to say Anthony Yard for a second, against Daniel Dubois' next opponent. Yeah, Ishida went to a 10-round split decision against Dubois' next opponent, and Ishida is a career super welterweight. That just puts things into perspective for you, <laughs> all right? Ashida is the same guy who fought James, James Kirtland years and years ago. The same guy who got knocked out in about two or three rounds by Gennady Golovkin about six years ago. Yeah, that Ashida is the very same guy who fought Fujimoto, Dubois' next opponent. And again, he went to a 10-round split decision with Fujimoto. So that puts into perspective the level Fujimoto's at. Now, when this fight was initially made, I thought, Dubois is going backwards now. His level of opposition is starting to go down. This is not a good sign because uh, Tete was a big step down from Gorman and even Johnson. Big step down. Tete was horrible. In fact, Tete was also a step down from uh, Latte, who was much better. Latte is cousin, way better than Tete. So I thought, wow. Dubois' opposition is going down now. You know, first Tete and now Fujimoto. What's going on here? But to be fair, the Tete fight was for the vacant Commonwealth title. So even though it was a poor opponent, there was something worth having on the line. So I can forgive that. And I've now found out that this fight against Fujimoto is a ranking fight. So even though it's on paper a very poor opponent, he will gain something out of this, which will be the uh, vacant WBC silver heavyweight title, something Dylan White held uh, for quite a while. And he may inherit uh, Fujimoto's ranking with the WBA. Fujimoto is not ranked in the top 10 of any of the sanctioning bodies other than the WBA. He's in here at number 12. Dubois is ranked by the WBC at number 15, uh, by the, what's this here, WBO, number six, and number 12 with the IBF. So he'll complete the set and also get a ranking with the WBA in all likelihood if he beats Fujimoto. I mean, well, when he beats Fujimoto, excuse me. Yes, it's heavyweight boxing. All these guys can whack, or most of them can, with little 10 ounce gloves on. Funny things can happen when the lever starts flying. You know, big men are throwing punches. But uh, other than some bizarre... <laughs> a situation, Daniel Dubois should come through this fight very, very easily indeed and inherit that ranking in this WBC silver heavyweight title. So that's what I'm expecting. And again, I'm going to have to give it a pass. I I'm not talking about not, you know, boycotting the fight. I'm definitely watching the fight. I mean, I'm going to have to give Daniel Dubois a pass. I'm going to have to let him off. I'm going to have to give him a bly, all right, in old... So, you know, London street dialect. I'll give him a bligh because of the fact that it's a ranking fight and he's a young guy, you know, won the Commonwealth against Tete. Now he's got a ranking fight. I'll give him a bligh. But his next fight after this needs to be a step back up again because having ranking fights is great, but you also need fights, uh, fights which can develop the fighter because if they reach the point where they become mandatory and they haven't had the right development fights, they can fall short at the highest level. I mean, that's probably what happened to Anthony Yard. Let's be real. 
He had all these ranking fights, which got him into the position to fight Kovalev, but he didn't quite have enough to beat Kovalev. If he'd had more, more appropriate tests along the way, then maybe he would be, uh, or he would have been the WBO light heavyweight champion. So we don't want the same thing to happen to Dubois. We want to make sure that he has the right tests along the way. Not just these ranking fights against poor opposition. Now, one of the issues that I've spoken about before, which Dubois may be having, is the fact that he's clearly talented and dangerous, but he doesn't sell tickets. And because of that, a lot of the more well-known fringe contenders, former champions, and even high-level journeymen, they're going to look at him and say, you know what? The risk doesn't outweigh the reward. Warren is not offering me enough to go in there and probably get beat by Daniel Dubois. I need more money than that. You see, if Dubois was a big ticket seller and he was already doing, you know, filling out the O2 by himself, you know, headlining at the O2, but filling it out as, you know, the main attraction and maybe even doing pay-per-views, if he was doing that, then there would be no shortage of fairly well-known heavyweights who want to step in the ring with him. But unfortunately, he's not doing that. You know, he's not selling loads of tickets and, you know, bringing in large numbers of viewers on television. So, yeah, he's going to struggle, man. They keep talking about the Joe Joyce fight, which is a natural in-house fight to try and make. But Joyce is looking at the European. He's not really looking at Daniel Dubois at this stage, it would seem. And, and in fact, even with Joe Joyce, you've heard his manager, Sam Jones, He's saying, if you pay us the right money, we'll take the Dubois fight. The inference being, they haven't offered the right money yet. See, this is one of the issues of being, uh, with being good and dangerous, but not selling tickets. You, you, you can get into a position where you hit a brick wall and nobody wants to risk fighting you. They don't gain anything from it. It's a dangerous fight against clearly a very a good young talent, but what do they get if they win? Not much. <laughs> and what do they get if they lose? Clearly not enough because they could get an opportunity elsewhere against a, another dangerous opponent who might be higher up in the rankings that's going to pay them a lot more. So they'll prefer to do that rather than fight Dubois. So Frank Warren and BT Sport, Dubois' management team, they got their work cut out with regards to trying to get this young man the appropriate development fights. Yeah, it's all well and good getting him rankings and all that kind of stuff, cool. But he needs development fights, fights that are going to test him, fights where he's actually going to come up across some proper competition. That's what he needs before he challenges for world titles in the future. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out.